Here's a simple experiment using food dyes and bleach. I'm going to add two drops of bleach to each of these solutions of dye. And then I'm going to swirl the contents of each flask. The bleach I'm using is 8.25% sodium hypochlorite. If you're using a concentration of bleach that's a little less than that, you probably have to add three drops instead of two. Okay. We notice here that the flask that originally had green dye in it is now blue. The flask that originally had orange dye in it now appears to be red or pink. The dye that, or the flask that originally contained yellow dye is now colorless. And the blue and the red dyes are maintaining their, their color. I'm going to describe how to do this experiment and I'm also going to explain a little bit behind what's going on in the color changes. So to prepare these flasks, what you do, let me just put a new setup here. Okay. To prepare these flask, flasks, what you do is, let me just show you how to do the uh, orange one, for example. I'm going to get a large container, and I'm going to put one drop of red food dye, one drop of yellow food dye, and then I'm going to mix that with 500 milliliters of water. That's about two cups. And then from this large container, you're going to put 100 mils into this particular flask here. To prepare the green dye, use two drops of green food coloring, add 500 mils of water, and 100 mils goes into the flask containing the green dye. For the yellow, you use two drops of yellow, 500 mils of water, and 100 mils goes into the flask. For the red, two drops of red, 500 mils of water, and 100 mils of that goes into the flask. And of course, for the blue, two drops of blue, 500 milliliters of water, and of the 500 that you prepare, 100 goes into the flask. The food dyes that I use for this experiment are McCormick uh, food dye. Again, as I stated before, the bleach that I use, it happens to be a little bit more concentrated than uh, most bleach that's sold. This is 33% um, more concentrated. It's 8.25% sodium hypochlorite. So if you're using a bleach that's maybe 5 or 6% sodium hypochlorite, instead of adding two drops to each beaker, you'll probably want to add three. So, what's going on in the, in the experiment itself? What one needs to recognize is really all of these flasks are just various mixtures of yellow, red, and blue food dyes. Green happens to be a combination of yellow and blue. Orange happens to be a combination whoop, of yellow and red. And of course, yellow is just yellow, red is just red food dye, and blue is just blue food dye. Now the color changes are, are a result of the different dyes reacting at different rates with the bleach, with the sodium hypochlorite. The yellow reacts very quickly with the bleach and the dye gets oxidized by the bleach and when the dye gets oxidized it goes to colorless product. So the yellow dye reacts very quickly. The red dye on the other hand 
and the blue die, both of these dyes react much more slowly with the bleach than the yellow dye. So because the green dye contains yellow and blue, when I add two drops of bleach to this, the yellow dye reacts quickly, is oxidized and goes colorless, but the blue dye persists. So when you sort of take the yellow out of green, you end up with blue. In a similar way, the orange, which contains yellow and red dye, if I add two drops of bleach to orange, again, which contains yellow and red, the yellow dye is oxidized very quickly to colorless product. The red dye is oxidized slowly. And so when you take the yellow out of orange, you're left with red. Now an interesting extension to this particular experiment is to look at the different rates of reaction of blue and red dye. These react a little uh, differently with bleach. Now in order to see this, we're going to have to add more bleach. Chemists know that you can increase the rate at which certain substances react by increasing the concentration of the reactants. So to get these dyes to react more quickly with bleach, I'm just going to increase the concentration of bleach that's contained in each flask. And I'll just simply do that by adding a full dropper squirt to the blue and a full dropper squirt to the red. And I'll give both of these a swirl. And the increased concentration of sodium hypochlorite in the bleach will cause a faster reaction. The dyes are oxidized more quickly. And you can see the blue color is still persisting because it reacts very slowly with the bleach. And relatively, the red dye reacts more quickly. Of course, I had to add a lot of bleach to get it to go, but nevertheless, we can easily see that the red dye is fading much more quickly than the blue which leads to yet another experiment. Because we know that purple is made of a combination of red dye and blue dye. So to prepare this particular flask here, just like before, all I did is take a container this container already has uh, 500 mils of water in it. And to make the violet dye, as you would guess, you're going to add one drop of blue and you're going to add one drop of red. I'm going to mix this up real quick to get the violet. All right. And then 100 mils of this uh, 500 goes into this particular flask to, to prepare your, your violet. And by the way, 100 mils, that's, that's like a little less than, than a half a cup. So if you don't have a graduated cylinder to do those measurements, you would know how to prepare that particular flask. Okay, so again, we remember that the violet is comprised of an equal mixture of red dye and blue dye. And we also remember that the red dye reacts more quickly with the bleach than the blue dye. So if I add a full squirt of bleach to the violet dye, well, the flask that looks violet, we see a color shift to blue. The blue color is persisting, the red color is reacting very quickly, and that's why we get the color change that we see.